Welcome back to the Turd for Radio Network. Anyway, uh, t I had a question that come from someone, uh, I think, Fahid in Canada, and if I have just butchered your name, then I apologize, but I promise my intentions at least are well. Uh, the question is concerning elastic collisions. Uh, collisions such as the one I've got drawn, where you've got two objects that are drawn that are, they could be going towards each other, they could be chasing me away. It's your classic hit and bounce type of problem. And in this problem, we're going to use the equation m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial equals m1 v1. If you've watched my other videos, you already know that this is your go-to equation for hitting and bouncing. But in one of my other videos, m2, whew, sorry, I just finished lunch, so I'm a little sluggish. But in my other video, you know sometimes you work these problems and they give you no final velocity. They don't give you either of the two objects' final velocities after they hit. So in order to work this problem, you need a second special equation. And my second special equation looks like this. V1 initial plus V2 initial equals V1 final plus V2 of final. And what you end up doing is you use this second equation, substituting back into that one, and that's how you're able to work the problems. Again, that's not what this video is about, is actually working these. But the question was actually, apparently, um, Fahid's teacher is actually concerned over if you want to use this equation, then apparently you must prove where it came from. So fine, I will happily prove that one. I shall not be denied this day. You see, there's something we have to take into consideration. If you've got two objects, and they don't matter, we're just, they could be set one sitting still, that part doesn't matter. But you've got two objects in this collision. One of the things you have to can take, it, take into consideration, if this is truly an elastic collision, then all the kinetic energy before the collision, and I mean all, I'm talking about the sum, all of the kinetic energy before has to be equal to all of the kinetic energy after. And this is kind of a weird little way I'm writing it here, but that's what I'm getting at. I mean the kinetic energy uh, of object one initial and the kinetic energy, if you sum that up, the kinetic energy of object two initial, their combined kinetic energies have to be equal to their final combined kinetic energies. And so I know in this case, this teacher is requesting that the students use this equation, one-half m1 v1 initial square plus one-half m2 v2 initial square equals one-half m1 v1 final square plus one half m2 v2 final square oh my goodness and we are officially there so this student's teacher is expecting them to work these problems and this teacher wants them to use that equation combined with this elastic collision equation m1 v1 initial plus M2, V2 initial, we'll get there one year, I promise, M1, V1 final, plus M2, V2 final. And so this teacher is wanting the class to use those two equations to solve those problems. Well, I can test that that is entirely way too troublesome. Uh, I can work the same problem, again, by using the elastic collision equation combined with this V1 initial plus V2 initial equals V1 final plus V2 final. This is a much superior method. Here's the thing. Where am I getting this equation? That's what the question is actually is. That equation is nothing but these two equations combined. I've actually took those two equations, combined them, and made this equation. And now I will, this video is going to be nothing but a derivation of this formula. So let's first take a look at this big, incredibly ugly formula you're expected to use. And again, this formula comes about because all the kinetic energy is conserved in this problem. Well, first let's look at something. Look at these one-halves. Huh. Let's get rid of those. 
All those one halves can cancel out. But now, how in the world do I get from this and this, and I get into this much simplified look? And there's no M's in the problem or anything. So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to do something. I'm going to take this formula, and I'm going to get the M1s on one side so I can factor it out. So in other words, I'm going to rearrange this equation so that everything with an M1 is on one side of my equal sign, and everything with an M2 is on the other side. So that's what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to take this equation, M1, V1, initial square, and then I'm going to come over here and bring this other M1 over. So I'm going to subtract this guy from both sides. So minus M1, V1, final square, equals, and get all my M2s on the other side. So on the other side, I'll have M2, V2, final square. M2, V2, final square, and then we'll subtract M2, V2, initial square from the other side, minus M2, V2, initial square. And now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, and this is where, you know, we get a little algebraic in this, and hopefully if you're in a physics class, that's not an issue. But I'm going to factor the M1s out. So let's factor the M1s out, and I'm going to be left with M1, V1, initial square, minus V1 final square equals M2, factor that one out, V2 final square minus V2 initial square. And so hopefully you know everything I've done so far. Now I'm going to keep on factoring. I want to get this out of this form of like V1 squared minus V2. So I'm going to sit here and I'm basically going to unravel this equation. So to do this, that would be M1, and I'm going to break this apart. This would be V1 initial minus V1 final equal times V1 initial plus V1 final. So in other words, all I'm doing is factoring this equation. So if you look, V1 initial square minus V1 final square is V1 initial minus V1 final times V1 initial plus V1 final. So this foiled would give us this. So you could say I'm unfoiling the problem. And I'm going to do it to the other side too. M2, uh, this would be V2 final minus V2 initial times V2 final minus plus V2 initial. So now, all I've done is I've started with that big old ugly kinetic energy equation up here, and all I've done is take that thing, and let's keep on going, and it's got me to here. Now, you may be looking at this and you're still like, how in the world do I get this to this little special equation? Well, that's not that bad. I can get there. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to finally, I've got this equation to a point I can combine it. So I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to call, I don't know what we'll do. We'll call this formula, formula number one. There's where we're at right now. And so I'm going to take my other formula, and it looks like M1, V1 initial, plus, I know, I repeat things all the time. That's because... Where I come from, you have to memorize every equation you use. Plus M2, V2, ah, uh, final. So there is my momentum equation. Well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get all my M1s on one side and all my M2s on the other. I'm going to try and make this equation look like this kinetic energy equation. So this ends up M1, V1 initial, uh, let's see, minus M1 V1 final equals, on the other side, M2 V2 final minus M2. And you should start feeling some similarities. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back and I'm going to factor the M1s out of this. M1 times V1 initial minus V1 final equals M2 V2 final minus V2 initial. And now all of a sudden I want you to look at something. It's there. It's in front of you. 
M1V1 final. Look. It's right there. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute I'm going to substitute this equation back into this kinetic energy equation that I came up with through a bunch of factoring and backwards foliation. And so here I'm going to substitute now. But check this out. When I substitute in, this becomes M2 V2 final minus V2 initial times the original equation up there says V1 initial plus V1 final equals M2 V2 final minus V2 initial ah, V2 final plus V2 initial this is one heck of a problem, isn't it? But now look at something. Look on both sides. I've got M2. Look at this. Bam. The same thing is on both sides. That means cancel, cancel. I'm left with V1 initial plus V1 final equals. I'm going to rearrange these just so it makes more sense. V2 initial plus V2 final. And lo and behold, there is my special equation that I am now able to use. And if you need to see this work, I've got other videos where I actually work this out. So go take a look and watch one of those. Here, if you're still watching this, I'll do one really, really quick where we do this. A uh, problem will probably look like this. An object, let's say, has a mass of 2. The unit doesn't matter in this question anyway. And let's say that it's traveling at 3. And it hits another object of mass mm, 1. And let's just say that it is sitting still for the sake of making this a little bit easier mathematically. So let's make that V1, V2 initial. Let's make that 0. This would be my V1 initial. And so this is M1, this is M2. So now I'd come in and I would go immediately into my M1, V1 initial, plus M2, V2 initial, equals M1, my Walter Cronkite voice. That's probably nobody gets that anymore. But anyway, M1, V1 final, plus M2, V2 final. And now let's start plugging in some stuff into this. Uh, M1, I said, is 2 times 3 plus, well, V2 initial, I said, was 0, so that's just gone. So this would be 2 times 3 equals, let's see, we've got M1, that would be 2V1F plus M2 is 1V2F. And now what I'll do is I'll use my super special equation I just derived, and I'll go in, I'll plug my numbers into it. So if I plug in, again, I'm plugging in right now to that equation, and that's going to give me V1 initial, that would be 3 plus V1F equals 0 plus V2F. So that means that 3 plus V1F is V2F. So now all I've got to do, extend I page, I'm going to now substitute that right back in. So this is 6 equals 2. V1F plus 1 times, so this would end up being plus 3 plus V1F. And so this would give us 6 equals 3 plus 3 V1F. I believe I combine those like terms correctly. Subtract 3 from both sides. 3 equals, oh my goodness. Divide both sides by 3. And 1 is my V1F. And if I wanted to find V2F, all I'd have to do is come right back to here. And that would be 3 plus 1. And there's my V2F.
Uh, this is much, much, much simpler to use this equation combined with your elastic formula way more so than actually trying to start every problem with this idea of conservation of kinetic energy. But anyway, thank you so much for being a part and for, in the case of Fahid, subscribing and asking that questions. Anyway, I appreciate everybody, and y'all have a super awesome day. Aw, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, don't, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm out. Bye.